Hello there, it's Jeff here. I'd like to have a look at some of the new features of 3D Studio Max 2019. Many of the features that have come into 3D Studio Max 19 have been changes in the in the performance and a lot of the work has been done under the under the bonnet so to speak. However, there's a few features that I, I'm particularly keen to look at here. First of all, what I'll do, I'll perhaps come over to this top viewport and let's have a look at, um, perhaps let's have a look at these shapes first. So, if I created a, a, a shape here, like a star, for example, click on there um, and put second uh, radius out to there, something like that. Of course, we can, um, we can change the parameters of this as a dynamic object you know we've got the radius 1 radius 2 number of points and the fillet radius so i'll just pop that into um into the middle here like that now if i actually looked at this now i can see we could actually change some fillet radius if i want you kind of got the fillet radius i can pop change those fillet radius there if I fill it the radius 2, which will be the points in my case, I can adjust those like that. So what I'd like to do is just change the radius 2, bring that down a bit. Sorry, radius 1, perhaps bring that in a little bit more. So uh, then what I'd like us to look at perhaps is um, the way that we can Boolean these two, to, uh, Boolean objects together. So in order for us for me to create a new object. Let's basically create a circle here. If I put a circle across here like this and uh, just put that in the middle like that. What I could use, use is selecting um, let's say the uh, the star shape that I've just been editing there and come, uh, come back into the splines here and we've got this concept here called compound shapes so with this compound shape I can have the star shape here I can actually add in simple add operands in here so I bring that into here so I've now got a nice shape here if I jump back over to the um, perspective view for example we could see that I could put uh, an extrude on here for example if I come to uh, extrude uh, sorry if I come down to the modifier panel pop a little extrude on here for example and just put that little small extrude up there I like that now that is a rather nice little object now if I did come back I can come back to my shape boolean in here come back to my star and, and set up the star and change the number of points here so we can have a lot more points whatever we whatever we're working on so we've got a lot more dynamic motion in here on the um, on the shape boolean really nice little project here so while I've got this piece of geometry here uh, I'd like to actually have a look at some of the features of the materials which I find um, quite fascinating at the moment to be perfectly honest if I look at uh, my renderer, if I, if I just change to make it easier for me on this particular exercise, if I just make sure that I'm working on the scanline render, if I just did a simple render, relatively straightforward render there for the exercise here. So if I come over to, let's pop that over there for a second, let's come over to my materials editor here. And one of the areas like I mentioned a moment ago is that we've got some new features one of them is the advanced wood and another one is the OSL so both of those actually will are designed to plug into a, a physical material so initially if I plugged in a, a, a material in here a physical material you'll see parameters of the physical material if I just drag that pop that over there I've got the physical material in there now if I just did a render of that you'd see that we'd see the relationship there so I've got a little little quick render I'm putting any lights or anything on it's just really just to look at the idea of a render 
now if I just zoom in a little bit on here just to make a little bit closer there we go a little bit closer so that I can then produ uh, put onto here this advanced wood so I've got looking at my maps now we've got a nice one called advanced wood here's the usual ones you remember from uh, a long time but this one I particularly like the advanced wood so if I drag the advanced wood in if I double click on the advanced wood parameters you'll see that I've got a lot of parameters in here that we can check out in a second so if I if I plug in the diffuse color of my advanced uh, material uh, push it into my base color here my base map here you'll see what we've got here if I clicked on a render straightforward render here there we've got simple wood now what we actually have here is that this is taken on board a, a UV and it's a straightforward um, uh, UV based on the Z axis here if I change this to the Y for example we would actually have a nicer render because because we actually have this feature in the end grain working quite nice it's not just a straightforward uh, uh, concept of the of the mapping of the f on the face here it's actually a, a nice concept so for example I've done I've used this a lot when I'm I've used the idea of this a lot so when I'm working with timber now we do actually have some presets here some rather nice presets and uh, there's ash and cherry so for example if I change that to cherry um, cherry glossy for example I got cherry nice cherry uh, uh, timber there so this is rather you know looking rather good so what I could also do with this I can actually plug in this roughness in here so I can bring exa exactly the procedural straight into the roughness on this one as well we can render that as well not seeing a lot of difference on here particularly on the presentation because we aren't we haven't got a lot to reflect uh, our work so so that's fine but what we do have is a lot of a lot of new features on there on here so I can go to the cherry there mahogany maple and down into the pine if we like walnut and pine so if I had a glossy pine there for example classically nice glossy pine I, I think that's quite nice we can get good end grain on there as well so that's essentially what we have on the um, material for the wood I think is a very good material I'm going to just delete this out of the way for a second here but what I'll come down to is the um, physical material again I pop a physical material on here and what I'd like us to look at just very briefly is the fact that we've got an OSL environment in here now so with the o OSL I can expand the various um, OSL properties here so for, for example um, we've got some values uh, materials here and these materials maybe just this candy um, these materials are based on script so for example here we have an OSL script called candy for example um, if I clicked on there we would it would bring up the OSL uh, properties here of um, of our script so we've got a awful lot of nice scripts that are already um, included within within uh, 3D Studio Max 2019 so if I plugged in um, this color into base color here and did another render on there you'd see oops I, I'd need to apply that of course because I took the other one out so I would have this concept here as well so for example if I come back to my uh, candy option here I could actually change the scale perhaps push up the scale a bit here for example 
um, and make some bigger um, uh, and push up the radius like this so we can actually get some quite quite nice concepts going on here like this so this is just an example of a, a shader language but if you take a little time to have a look at uh, the uh, um, shader language this um, open shader language what we what's really good about this is there's an awful lot of stuff available and there's an awful lot of possibility to edit this as well and change the the way that this is working so you know this is only a very quick demo that this exists but you can actually have very comprehensive shader trees in uh, in an OSL so that's that's useful there for the materials textures and the advanced wood the shape blend one of the other areas that we can look at if I just um, just close that for a second um, maybe just uh, just a bit of a reset there don't don't change that and if I look at uh, classic uh, we've got to do a classic teapot haven't we sometime in the demo so if I did a classic teapot there and um, come into my materials once again and just did a, a simple material here physical material into here pop that into there um, maybe whatever color we're going to change this so I'm going to just pop that color into there just a simple color change that um, perhaps on my uh, do, 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 what we can have a little bit of roughness push a little bit of roughness up here if I just render that at the moment just for a second come to my render dialog box here render this simple simple feature there but if I pop let's push up the roughness here which is basically uh, giving us that little a little bit of uh, glossiness at low level not too much there so yeah there we've got a little bit of glossiness coming in there so a, sim a simple a simple little uh, exercise there so I'm just gonna minimize that at the moment because if we have a if I have this object in the in the scene we can look um, towards sharing views and that's relatively straightforward so if I click on um, in our file menu here right down here we got shared views so if you've got yourself if you've set up with um, your Autodesk viewer then we can actually uh, send this up to the cloud so as it's viewable I'm actually logged in up here as my account so if I did this as teapot uh, I don't know underscore blue just so that um, it's a different uh, it's a different update to uh, upload to what I was doing before so I click on share here if I then look at this um, uploading the uh, teapot 100% very quickly because it's a very small file for the point of view of this demo if I come over to my demos here this is an early one I've just met I've just been working on so if I come back to my um, viewer here teapot test I done there and the star that I was doing earlier on just for uh, for this so if I actually selected the teapot blue here the one I've just done you'll see that we get the blue teapot so the teapot now is in we can adjust this move around this so you can collect in your collaboration you know you can actually have the the teapot or whatever geometry of course you in your um, in your viewer so for example that's the teapot I did earlier on just a simple test just whilst I was preparing for this just to show that it was a different one that was in there and of course if I come back I could even have the star that I was just working on there there's a little model of the star that I made it's a simple simple little exercise once again just just the geometry of the of the star it gives you an idea of um, how we can work with that so 
Um, what we'll do there, if I just minimize that for a second, close that. Essentially, what we do have is, like I say, the materials, the shape blend, sharing the views, and like I said, extrude and bevel, uh, relatively straightforward. Splines uh, are good also. The, the project menu, one of the areas like I said, it's actually improved quite a bit, is the project dialog box up here. The project dialog box, we can actually set active projects, create an empty project, create default, and create from a current project. So if I do actually have a structure put all, all together, that's uh, that's another one. And also, in within our project uh, file menu, here we can actually configure those user paths so the setting up the projects is a lot easier there's one area that I didn't mention earlier on but I do find actually very useful in 3D Studio Max 2019 particularly if you're using geometry from other packages and one of those is the use of the Alembic exporter now, just to show you very briefly this, this the, I won't actually export anything, but we've got an export, the export dialog box here. If I click on export here, um, we can actually export uh, an alem alembic um, file here. So this, if this is my um, uh, teapot uh, blue again here, I can uh, send, uh, I could actually send that out. If I save that, what what we're actually happening now now with the new alembic exporter we've got a lot of nice nicer options in uh, in sending out the geometry so if you're going to if you want this to import or export into other geometry then uh, other programs this is an extremely good format for sending uh, geometry over or indeed receiving so because for example you can include in the UVs the normals the vertex color velocity etc certainly if you're in the games uh, world but the, the particularly what I like about the Alembic is the way that it deals with baking the geometry and baking the animation so if you're actually working in the studio and you want to do animation um, so uh, the Alembic would be used to, to bake the results of an animated scene for a handoff to a lighting and rendering. It would be used to hand off an animated creature for cloth and fresh flesh simulation or something like this. Um, basically, or handing off any animated geometry to a physical simulation engine. And so this is this particular exporter, I think, is extremely good. And it's sort of like hidden away. So it's a very useful um, concept. Very lastly, just before I continue, before I go, then just to mention that um, in interactive, um, interactive uh, is 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 here, and when we use interactive, the interactive has a lot better interactivity now, or you know, an enhanced link setting. The one of the reasons is is that if I've actually got IES data in my file, uh, in my lighting, in my 3D Studio Max scene, that will actually uh, export over into the uh, interactive now, uh, which of course is very useful uh, as I've been working with recently, working with VR, certainly for VR with it for interiors and when we build in and send in our geometry from uh, for example Revit into Max and enhancing in Ra Max the lighting and then putting that over into the VR engine uh, through uh, into Inter Interactive we are utilizing the IES data for those interior lights I personally think that's a really good feature so generally speaking then that's that gives us a little bit of an overview of some of the features of 3D Studio Max. I would definitely advise anybody who's considering looking at uh, 3D Studio Max uh, 2019 on the update to have a look at those open shaded language. There's a really lot of nice stuff there. If you're familiar with things in, in Revit, like um, Dynamo and stuff like this, Dynamo scripting, or if you're working with any type of uh, procedural material software, 
like Substance Designer or something like that, you'll be very much at home with the open shading language. The, it's only a very short demo here to say the, where it exists. It's a whole world of uh, uh, of uh, adventure, really, to be perfectly honest, the shader language. And like I said, the advanced wood mapping procedure. And as an interior design, as I worked a lot with interior design, getting nice procedural timber texture or wood texture has uh, uh, you know, come to the floor for us now. Shape, the shape, as I said, the shape blend. I think that was well deserved to come in now for the general flow of modeling and uh, and of course shared views the shared views is the collaboration tool I hope this has been useful it's very short and very uh, to the point little exercise or little presentation on what's happening in 3d studio max 2019 as I say my name is Jeff and uh, thank you very much for having a look at this bye bye